everybody, it's me, Laura, and today we're going to be doing a picture using the segmented petal flowers that I did last week. Yep, we're going to have some fun with this. I, I couldn't, I didn't know what else to do with them. I mean, so to me, it's like, put it in a picture. So I had my board and I was like, I was thinking, okay, we could just go ahead and lay it out and just, okay, this is for this flower and this is for, and no. <laughs> I, I wanted to do something more. These flowers were so pretty, they were so fun. And I thought, let's go ahead and create a really fun background for this thing and a really fun picture. So I took some scrap clay here, and this is all brown. I rolled it out on a number four setting on my Atlas Pasta machine. And then I measured one inch, one and a quarter inches all the way around the board to give myself a little bit of a white border. Once I had that, we're going to go ahead and I'll take that scrap clay and I'll lay it down inside of that border. Okay, so like I said, I've got that scrap clay and I'm going to go ahead and lay this down on my board, okay? And the thing is here, when I started to lay it down, I realized, yeah, it's not going to be as wide as I need it to be for my background. So what I did was I conformed most of this to the actual, you know, the lines that I had already, you know, drawn out. Once I had that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make sure it's all cut to those lines. Then the part that's raggedy and inside uh, the border area, we're going to cut that nice and flush. So I have a nice straight line. Once I have that, I'm going to take some more of that scrap clay and I'm just going to cut a section of it, make sure it's flush and join it up to this other larger piece on the board. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got this other piece that I put onto the board and I'm just going to go ahead and confine it or I should say cut, cut this thinner piece down to you know the drawn line edge. Once I have that, and actually before that, I decided to score it in. And I just thought this way then, if I join these two pieces, it's going to be a little bit easier to handle once I bake the entire picture. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and I've got my colorful background here. Yes, yellow to pink to turquoise. And this is actually done in Cato clay. I, <laughs> I thought I'd give myself a little bit of a break here. And Cato's really great for, you know, if I want to stretch it a little bit, I can do so. And I really needed to have that happen because, again, I was still not going to make it all the way down to that bottom edge. So I kind of pulled this thing a little bit here and there just to kind of get it to where I really liked it. Once I had that in, um, I'm going to go ahead and take my long blade again. I was, that's an eight inch blade, guys. So it's, it's a pretty long blade. And I'm going to cut this colored piece so it will conform to the scrap clay piece underneath. Now, I'm not sure if many of you have asked me before or ever wondered why I put that scrap clay piece underneath. I have been discovering since I've been doing my pictures that if I put a piece of scrap clay down on the bottom where the board is at, and then I put my background, whatever it's going to be, on top of that, there's a less likely chance of the clay cracking. I don't know why it is. I think maybe it's just because this top piece or this top layer is not quite as adhered into the board like the scrap clay pieces. You see what I mean? Because I have to go ahead and I have to glue that in. I've got to glue that clay onto the board. So if I'm gluing that clay onto the board, 
that clay has a little bit more of mm, a tendency where it could crack, but with this, I feel like I kind of guard against it a little bit. So that's why I put a scrap piece clay down on the board before I put my, you know, the, the background I really want. Okay, so now we're gonna bring in the black clay and I'm gonna move my picture off to the side. Just remember guys, when I'm doing this background piece, everything is rolled out on a number four setting on your Atlas Pasta machine. So I'm taking my blade and I just thought, yeah, let's just go ahead and we're just gonna make some fun little divots and stuff with our blade. Now, the more I did this, the more I was like, eh, I don't really like using the blade. Instead, bring in your X-Acto knife. <laughs> I just find if I want to go ahead and create some notches to get my black background, my mountain scene, this is what I'll do. And do this randomly, you know, just have fun with it. You know, I started right away with just a, a, a light, like, you know, just a, a curve, curvy kind of thing. And then I went in and I thought, yeah, let's go ahead and just chop it up a little bit. And it really came across as a nice set of a mountain scene. So just keep that in mind. Now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll bring that picture piece back in again. And right where I had that raggedy edge on the bottom, I'm laying this right over the top. So no one's ever gonna know you had that. It's, it's a really nice way to just cover up <laughs> any kind of like little oopsie <laughs> you might have. <laughs> and then once I had this down, once I had my black down, I'm going to go ahead and like you could tell right here with my blade, I'm cutting this right to the edge where all the rest of the clay was cut using my blade. Okay, so I didn't originally show you guys what I started with when it came to this frame. Frame, excuse me. <laughs> it's a 10 by 12. And I thought, I just wanted to get that out of the way so you guys had a good idea as to how big this thing was. I'm gonna bring in now some of my teaspoons and some of those Dove, you know, wrappers that I always hold on to all the time. <laughs> what can I say? I, I never throw those away. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna take those and I'm gonna stuff those into my quarter, my quarter of a teaspoon little thing. And I'm gonna make these little tiny dots. And then once I do that, I'm gonna do a few of these. And then I'll make, you know, I really liked the other side though too you know, the oblong kind of oval looking piece. So I went ahead and I decided to make a few of those as well. Once I made a few of these tin foil forms, I decided to go ahead and take some black clay, which was rolled out on a number four setting, yet again on my Atlas Pasta machine, and I'm just gonna wrap these around these tin foil forms. And once I get to the flattened part, I just kind of pull the, the excess off. <laughs> you don't need a blade, just pull the excess off, but make sure it's a nice, you know, the nice thing about doing it this way is that I don't have to do anything more to it. It's just a nice black little dot. Same with the little ovals. Do the same thing that there on those forms too.
Now I'm bringing in my green clay and this clay was actually, there was a lot of glitter in it and I don't, you know, I don't like to do cane work with any kind of glitter clay because it'll just drag when you go to cut down on it. But in this case, this is a great way to use your glitter clay. So I decided I'll go ahead and make some stems. This is for my flowers and I'll just cut these out of this sheet. So if you're ever trying to find a use for your glitter clays and you just don't know what else to do with it, <laughs> this is the way I do it. <laughs> Okay, so we're now finally ready to put this picture together. I can't wait. So I'm <laughs> already, I'm bringing in that green stem and I go up pretty high on the one side here. And then I'm just kind of cutting off the extra right at the base. You're gonna notice as I put this picture together, I like to, um, you really wanna make your eye move as much as possible. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna have a series of these stems where some are gonna be really long and then some are gonna be really short and very, very close you know, to the bottom here of the picture, just like I have right here. Now, right here, I'm already bringing in some of these um, flowers. I'm like, okay, where would, this, where would this look best? Where can I put it that it would look great? And I love my green stem on the bottom, but I didn't want it to interfere with that black skyline too much either. Keep that in mind when you're you know, placing down your flowers and stuff, what kind of a background you're dealing with. Because I had that black line really jaggedy and going across that background, you don't want your flowers to interfere too much with that skyline. Some is okay, but sometimes if you're just having it where the green line goes right up and you have the flower, eh, it might not look right. So kind of use your eye a little bit here and try to figure out what looks best. Now you'll notice there, I took one of those tin foil forms and I thought, let's go ahead and put that at the end of a stem. And then I'm using some of those extra pieces I had done from last week, and we're gonna make a little flower out of it. And that's what I did there. All right, so from here on, I'm really just building this picture. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys watch my hands talk as I put more and more of this picture together.
Okay, so you could tell right here, this picture is really filling up with flowers. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I had quite a few that I had made from the last segment. I mean, really, if you think about it, I had like, what, eight, nine, ten, probably close to 20 different purple and white flowers. Um, and then I had all their little pieces to kind of go with them. So I decided, okay, how do we put this all together? And the more I started putting these flowers in, I realized I'm not gonna have enough room. <laughs> so there wound up being about four or five flowers along with some other pieces and parts that I just was not able to use in this picture. But that being said, I'm probably going to plan to do another smaller little picture to kind of go along with this piece. Um, you can, you don't have to make it a standalone piece. You could have some smaller picture frames where you could use these similar flowers and make it kind of a grouping, which is really kind of nice. I love doing that. So keep that in mind when you're doing, you know, you, when you're making these flowers, you've got a ton of them. <laughs> make sure you keep a few extra because maybe you'll make a couple more pictures that will go and work with this one as your main piece. Okay, so now you're probably starting to notice how, you know, I added these little teardrops of green right at the bottom of some of those single petals. And remember, all of these flowers are already baked. They're already pre-baked. But I went ahead and took some of that green and I just kind of scored it in to the stem so it looks like that's the base of the flower and it's about to be, you know, blooming way more than what it is right now. It's just kind of a small bud. So this is a really nice way to do this. I'm also bringing in my little leaf cane. I had some leaf cane sitting around. And I thought this is a great way to use it. Um, normally I would probably bring out my regular green and make a three dimensional leaf, but I thought, no, let's go ahead and use some of my cane because why not, right? <laughs> You've got leaf cane sitting around. Why not put that into the picture itself as well? And it gives it a slightly different look from just doing a three dimensional thing, but I like it. And I think part of it is because it kind of goes well and works well in concert with the segmented petal cane that I'm using here in these flowers. Okay, at this point, I started bringing in some light purple clay that I just had randomly sitting around. I thought, let's go ahead and use some of this up. And I went ahead and made some small balls and some small teardrops and added those in to the center part of these black, um, really the black centers on some of these uh, smaller flowers. And I used my knitting needle then to go ahead and make the indents so I could go ahead and put rhinestones in later. So. This was really, at this point, I'm starting to just, what can I say, zentangle in clay? <laughs> There's a little bit of me that's doing this. It's just wherever your little heart takes you <laughs> on creating these flowers, do it. You don't necessarily have to be stuck with something that looks, it has to look like a certain flower. I prefer not. Use your imagination, have some fun with it. Um, I eventually then also brought in some wire because I thought I wanted to bring in wire, add a little bit more of a flowing element in that regard, and it was just a lot of fun.
All right, so here I wanted to show you all the extra cane I got from last week, and I thought I need to really use up some of this. And the red was just on there. I was trying something else out, but I thought I'm going to take two of my segmented petal canes, and guess what? <gasps> I have butterfly rings. Yes. Oh my goodness. You know, and I know this is January. I mean, who's thinking butterflies in January? <laughs> Apparently, I am. <laughs> Anyway, what can I say? I'm cold all the time. <laughs> I want to get warmer. <laughs> anyway, so I just decided to go ahead and cut some um, butterfly wings, just some random things using that same color scheme and have some fun with these. So we're going to add these into our picture as well. Okay, so at this point, the picture has been baked and I just lifted it off. I'm taking a little bit of super glue and I'm just putting it in spots on the background, on the back of this big clay piece. And then once I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that it's centered wherever the corners are on the board. So make sure that you have decent pencil marks so you know exactly where to place this thing. Because once it goes down, it pretty much goes down and stays down. <laughs> It ain't moving. <laughs> From here, I decided, okay, now we're going to start throwing in the rhinestones. So I'm bringing in my rhinestones. I'm going to start putting some glue in the centers of each of my flowers and putting a rhinestone in each of those. Once I started putting in some of those clear rhinestones, I decided, you know what? I really want to put some green ones in too, especially at the base of where it either joins with the stem to the flower or at the base of where each of the leaves is. I thought this would be just a nice little extra accent and this way it would add some fun to the picture. At this point, I got most of my rhinestones in, and so I decided to take a little bit of my Comet and go around to where all those pencil lines are because I can erase that off and just clean up my nice little whiteboard. Okay, so when putting this picture together, I wanted to go ahead and bring in some of my acrylic paints. Now, Huh. <laughs> How do I, okay. Mm. When I started doing this, um, I thought I was going to be using my metallics and I did bring in my color shift paint because I thought, okay, let, we'll just throw that in for the heck of it. And the more I started looking at this because my dark green here, and this is after it's been baked, it's really dark, right? And I really didn't want everything so dark. I mean, here's this, these dark stems and then you got dark background. And I'm like, I need some light here. I definitely need some light. And so I decided let's go ahead and add some accent in with a little bit of my metallic paints that are lighter. And the more I looked at the metallic paints that I had picked out, I was like, you know what? That purple is too dark. 
and the darker metallic paint, that was not going to work. So I finally went with the color shift paint, which really was the happy go lucky. Yay. It worked great. So I went ahead and I, I did some accents, but then I also came back in on the two taller, I want to say, I want to say it was two of my taller stems here on the picture and went full bore on the color shift paint and just went ahead and painted it. I also decided to use that green metallic paint, or I should say the color shift one, on my leaves as well. I mean, they, they were nice, they were cute looking, they had some detail, but I wanted just a little bit more. <laughs> so I thought I'm gonna go ahead and use some of that light metallic color shift paint, and it was a nice way to go ahead and make dots on some of those leaves, giving them a little more detail and a little more fun. It really brought more and more of the picture to life. Okay, so at this point, I really did think that I was completely finished. I really did. I thought, okay, I'm completely finished. But the more I started looking at the picture, the more I thought, no, I got to do just a little bit more to it. And it's mainly in the yellow. I decided to bring in some of my gold. And part of this is due to the fact that my yellow was not really clean. So I had some areas where I thought, okay, this is not really great. <laughs> We need to clean this up. So to me, the only way I could really think about doing this was to use some paint. And it was actually a fun thing to do. I took my pencil and you could tell like, right in here, I had sketched out some little curls in the yellow area. And then I decided, let's go ahead and bring in some gold metallic paint and fill in those areas and see what happens. And the more I worked with it, the more I loved it. Yes. <laughs> it was like, finally, <laughs> I got the solution. I was, I was so frustrated with this picture because there were parts of it that I kept thinking, oh gosh, that doesn't look right. Oh, this doesn't. But the more I worked it, the more it came around to the point of where, okay, I'm happy with it. So don't always give up on something if you think, oh, it's just, oh, trash it, it doesn't look good. No, 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 don't trash it. <laughs> don't get rid of it. You, you know, if, if you're frustrated, walk away from your piece and then come back and work on it a little bit later. For me, it was just a matter of keeping with it and keep going. And once I did that, it, you know, eventually it all kind of worked itself out. Okay, so this is the end result of creating my purple flowers on a sunrise. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I'm always wondering what you're thinking. Otherwise, I am sending out my biggest hugs to each of you, and I hope you have a fantastic day.